You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 2 Timothy 2, 1-4 The life that Christians have taken on seems to be a constant battle. There is the battle that occurs internally, the inner war within the mind. We fight to keep our mind stayed on Jesus within the mind. We have the law of the flesh waging war against the law of the spirit. Then there is the war that we fight against principalities, powers, and rulers of wickedness in high places. Everywhere we turn on this journey of faith, we are forced to fight. We cannot afford to sit back and just take what the devil brings our way. We have a right to live under the blessings and favor of God, and the enemy will always try to thwart that. We must be determined to stand up and hold our ground. Let us stand like soldiers and fight. Are you ready to fight? Well, ready or not, the battle is on. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Stand up, shake off your shoulders, Shine your breastplate, polish your shoes, tighten your belt, fix your helmet, take up your shield and sharpen your sword. The war is on and you are in it once you are a Christian. Christian soldiers, the war is on. We will get wounded. We will suffer bruises. But God is with us during these battles and we can trust that he will never allow the enemy to triumph. Do not get entangled. We have to ensure that we keep alert. We must not get distracted by things that do not pertain to our fight. We must always be ready to give a defense of the faith. A distracted soldier is of no benefit to the battle. In fact, if we become distracted, we are more of a liability. Some people are depending on us in the battle. They expect us to be praying for them, interceding for them, covering them with the blood of Jesus and welding the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God on their behalf. If we are distracted, we are leaving them and ourselves exposed. Satan 
will use all his schemes to get our attention away from what is essential. God wants us to stand up and fight. But too often we are lying down and surrendering to our desires. We must keep the focus on the task ahead and not lose our battle stance. Our commanding officer is Jesus Christ. He showed us the perfect way to fight this battle. The victory is already won. But we must be obedient to the commanding officer. Satan will come at us wanting us to obey the desires of our natural body. We cannot become distracted by that. Like Jesus, we must declare it is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4, the word of God is the perfect sword that we need in the battle against the enemy. The devil is not an easy opponent. When we use the word of God, we can expect him to try even harder. He did this in Jesus' case. He used scripture in trying to get Jesus to turn away from his purpose. Satan will do this as well when he comes against us. He will twist the Bible if it accomplishes his purpose to defeat us. We must never back down. The word of God spoken from the mouth of a spirit-filled person is sharp and quick. Jesus' response to the devil was the same as before. It is also written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When we hear anything that tries to hit us off course, our only weapon is the word of God. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of the kingdom of darkness. I said it before and I will say it again. The word is our weapon. Speak the word, pray the word, use the word. Since food and natural things didn't affect Jesus' mission, the enemy tried to appeal to the word. When that didn't work, he went to worship. Anything that pulls us to shift our praise, worship, and thanksgiving to anything or anyone other than God is demonic. It is important to know that the commander and chief of our army, who is also our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, needs to always be central in our mission. This is how we please him. If we move him from the center of our focus in the battle, we would have already lost the fight. Even when... The devil played his final card. Jesus' response was the same. It is written. Listen, my friends, we cannot fight the battle as good Christian soldiers if we do not know the word of God. Paul commands his spiritual son, Timothy, to study to show himself approved. This is an act of sharpening our swords of the spirit. We must be willing to say it is written and point to the word of God when the battle intensifies. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Every rebuke of the devil is only as effective as the word we use to rebuke him. Why is this so? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our faith to rebuke the devil is built on the level of faith we have, having heard the word. When the enemy tries to come in and wreck our families, we must stand against him with the word. It is written. When he tries to take away our joy and peace, it is written. When he tries to make us worry about money, food, and clothing, it is written. Anything the enemy throws at us can be rebuked with the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that in the end, we may say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Second Timothy 4, 7.